Alrighty, today we are solving logarithmic equations. And so the first little question here says rewrite the following exponential equation as a logarithm. So some of you may not recognize this exponential because it has a log in it. But remember, an exponential is where the x is in the exponent. And so we have a b in the base. So if we wanted to translate this into a logarithm, we would say log base b of whatever's in the x, the box, equals log base b of x. So remember, logarithms equal the exponent, so that's why this equals the exponent. So what would have to be true? It would have to be x for that to be true. So that's really cool because what that tells us is that if we have an exponential with log base or an exponential with base b and then we have a logarithm in the exponent with that same base that because they're inverses of each other they undo each other and that just equals x. Super cool. Okay, so what are we going to do today? We're going to isolate the logs. If there's more than one logarithm, just like with radicals, we're going to get one on each side if we can. Sometimes we can't. So again, if there's more than one, we'll try and get one on each side. But if there's a third term in there, we got to be a little bit more um, tricky with that. Then what we're going to do is exponentiate both sides. And that's probably new for you guys. Exponentiate means put it in the exponent. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay? And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to check for extraneous solutions. And what does that mean in terms of logarithms? You guys already know. You cannot take the log of a negative number or zero for that matter. So what that means is that the argument has to be greater, greater than zero. So can't equal zero or a negative number. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, let's take a look at this first equation. This says log base seven of x plus three equals log base seven of four to the x. Well, how do we undo a logarithm? The way we undo a logarithm is with an exponential. So what we're gonna do is take that logarithm and exponentiate it, which means put it in the exponent. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. This looks strange for you because you've never seen it before, but you'll get used to it, okay? And since logarithms and exponentials are inverses, they undo each other. So this exponential with base seven undoes the log with base seven, and we're just left with x plus three. And same thing on the other side, this exponential with base seven is undone by that log with base seven, and we're just left with the argument. So then we're gonna solve that like normal. We are going to combine like terms, so I'm going to happen to go over to this side because that's easier for me, and I get 3 equals 3x, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'm going to get x equals 1. Before I call that the answer and that this exponential, I'm sorry, this logarithmic equation is solved, I'm going to verify that this value of x equals 1 doesn't make either of those arguments negative. So if I do 1 plus 3, that's 4. And if I do 4 times 1, that's also 4. So that's a good solution. So my answer for that one is x equals 1. Okay, moving on to the next one. We have the natural log of 6x plus 20 equals the natural log of x plus 5. So what's the base of the natural log? That's log base e. So I'm going to exponentiate with log base e on both sides. The reason why I can do this is because there's only one logarithm and nothing else on each side. So I know exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other. So those two things undo each other. 
and I get 6x plus 20 equals x plus 5. Combine, um, sorry, not combine like terms, get the variable on one side and everything else on the other. So I end up with 5x equals, uh, what is that, negative 15. Divide both sides by 5. And then what I get is x equals negative 3. And the only thing I have left to do is to check if that makes either of my arguments negative. So 6 times negative 3 is 18 plus 20 is positive 2 when I check it. And negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. So because none of my arguments are negative, that is a valid solution. Moving on to the next one. Oh, look at this one. Wow, there's only one logarithm and it's on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna wanna make sure to do is isolate the logarithm. So right now what we have is this is the logarithm with its argument. So what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and make sure that we get that two away from it. So we get the natural log of 3x minus 2 equals 5. How do I undo or reverse a logarithm? That's with an exponential. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to go e to the, and I'm going to make my whole equation go into an exponential. So both the left and the right-hand sides go into the exponential. Well, looky-looky, on the left-hand side, e and natural log are going to cancel out because they're inverses. So on that side, I get 3x minus 2. But on the right side, e to the fifth can't be simplified anymore. So that's just going to be left as e to the fifth. We still have to solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 add 2, e to the 5th, and 2 are not like terms, so I get 3x equals e to the 5th plus 2, and then after that, divide by 3, divide all by 3, and I get x equals e to the 5th plus 2 divided by 3. This right here is my non-calculator portion answer, and then I just type that into the calculator, and then I get that the calculator answer or the approximate answer is gonna be 50.138. Okay, so you have to be careful with two of those. So this was the calc answer. Okay, let's look at number four. What I'm gonna do with number four is again, step one, isolate the logarithm and its argument. So that's just that piece right there using proper math technique, that means I'm gonna subtract one, and then I'll get two log base two of x minus six equals five. And then again, continuing with proper math technique to isolate that logarithm, we are going to divide by two, but I just noticed I tried to do some fast math in my head. This is 10 when you do 11 minus one, and then divide by two. Just one step ahead. Okay, so what is this logarithm that's now that's been isolated? What is the base of the logarithm? So the base of that logarithm is two. So what I wanna do is exponentiate with base two. So here's a little trick you can do if you don't wanna keep writing it a second time. Exponents are smaller than bases, so just to make it look more accurate, we're going to make this two really big. So what we did is we put log base two of x minus six in the exponent and five in the exponent. So base two and log base two undo each other 
and we're left with x minus 6 equals 2 to the 5th, and 2 to the 5th is 32. So then we're going to do the math to get the x by itself, add 6 to both sides, and we get x equals 38, and we're just going to do a quick check that x equals 38 does not make the argument of that logarithm negative. It doesn't because 38 minus 6 is a positive number, so we know that x equals 38 is not an extraneous solution. It's a valid solution. Okay, so then we get this little note here for us, and it says... If more than one log or natural log is in the equation, you must condense first, right? So that's going to be the trickiest part, and you must condense properly. So remember, logarithms are the inverse of exponentials, so we have to follow the properties of exponentials to condense our logarithms. So what that means is that when we look at this first one, we have a logarithm, then a logarithm, then a logarithm. We have three logarithms. So what we're going to do is condense the left side of the equation. And the way we do that is we're going to change the minus to division, and then we're condensing it so there's only one logarithm. So this is log base 3 of x minus 8 over x minus 7 equals log base 3 of 2. Now at this point, we have logarithm on the left, logarithm on the right, so what we want to do is exponentiate. So because the base of this logarithm is 3 on both sides, we are going to reverse that by exponentiating with base 3. So we're going to put that logarithm in the exponent, and then what's going to happen is that these are going to undo each other. So we get x, this is x minus 8 over x minus 7 equals 2. And then we've already done these before. To get rid of the x minus 7, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 7. And what will happen is this will cancel. And so we'll be left with x minus 8 equals 2 times x minus 7. And then we can just solve from there x minus 8 equals 2x minus 14, subtract x, subtract x, add 14, add 14, and then on the left side we're going to get that 6 equals x. But again, we're going to make sure that none of the arguments in the original problem become negative. So when I plug 6 into the very first argument, which is this guy right here, 6 minus 8 equals negative 2. And since it equals negative 2, that's not a good solution. Once it doesn't work, it's a no solution problem. Okay, number 6. Again, we have two logarithms. And then a number on the other side doesn't matter if you have two logarithms, logarithms on one side and either a third logarithm or a number on the other side. You have to condense down to a single logarithm on the left and either a number or single logarithm on the right side of the equal sign. So because this is a plus sign, that's going to mean multiply. So that means that this is going to be log base 10, even though we don't write it, of 5x times x plus 1 equals 2. Now again, because we know that if no number is written, that it really means base 10, how do we undo a logarithm with base 10? We exponentiate with base 10. So this is going to be 10 and 10. So we get these two are going to cancel. And I get 5x times x plus 1 equals 10 squared, which is 100. Okay? And then we're just going to follow the math trail on that. We're going to get uh, 5x squared plus 5x equals 100. 
And then because the highest power of x in our equation is a 2, it means it's quadratic. So that means that we're going to get one side equal to 0. So we're going to subtract the 100. And then from there, we're going to GCF. So they all have a 5 in common. So that's going to be x squared plus x minus 20. And then we're going to t-chart this right here. So that's going to be x plus 5 times x minus 4 equals 0. And then we're going to use that zero product property. So we get 5 equals 0, which is not true. x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. So that means x equals negative 5 and 1. But again, go back to the original problem and check your arguments, okay? Um, when I plug in negative 5 to the first argument, that's 5 times negative 5, which is negative 25, so that doesn't work. When I plug in 1, I get 5 times 1, which is 5. And then when I go to the second logarithm, which is right here, 1 plus 1 is 2, which is a positive number, so that means the only solution is x equals 1.